This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to sign up using the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. A possible union between Moldova and Romania has been a topic of debate ever since Moldova gained independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. But this year, the movement got a boost from an unexpected source, the Eurovision Song Contest where Moldova's song seemed to implicitly promote a union between the two countries. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the arguments for and against unification, and then evaluate the likelihood of any of this actually happening. If you like our videos and want more from TLDR EU, then be sure to subscribe to help us get ever closer to half a million subscribers. First things first though, a bit of background. And apologies up front for how similar these flags are. It is going to get confusing, unfortunately. But just remember that Moldova is the one with the little crest in the middle. Anyway, Romania is by far and away the larger of the two nations, roughly seven times bigger than Moldova, with a population of almost 20 million people. 89.9% of these people are ethnic Romanians, 6.5% are ethnic Hungarians, residing largely in the Transylvania region, and 3.3% identify as Roma. By contrast, Moldova, which lies on Romania's northeastern border, only has a population of about 3 million people. 75.1% are Moldovan, 7% are Romanian, 6.6% Ukrainian, 4.6% Gagaus, and 4.1% Russian. And these demographics are actually really important if you want to understand the possibility of unification, as we will explain later. Before that, though, we need to go through some history. That's because the people of Moldova and Romania have significant cultural and historical ties. Two-thirds of Moldovans are Romanian descendant, and their language and flags are barely distinguishable, something I imagine you're finding a lot more annoying than when I first mentioned it. Anyway, Romania and Moldova, previously known as Wallachia and Moldovia, were once vassal states under the Ottoman Empire. The two even merged to form the Kingdom of Romania in 1881, although Russia did still control some of Moldova after the Crimean War. This all changed, though, after the Russian Revolution of 1917, when the eastern part of Moldova, Bessarabia, declared independence from Russia and joined the Kingdom of Romania. The USSR never accepted the new state of affairs, and at the beginning of World War II in 1940, Moscow retook the region, creating the Moldovian Soviet Socialist Republic with the independent Romanian SSR following soon afterwards. Fearing reunification, the USSR actively promoted a separate Moldovan identity by reintroducing the Cyrillic alphabet and repopulating the region with Russians and Ukrainians. In fact, to this day, Ukrainians and Russians represent a substantial minority within the country. In 1991, though, the Soviet Union collapsed, and the Republic of Moldova finally became a truly independent state. You get the idea, though. These two countries have significant cultural overlap and the history of political union, which is why reunification has always kind of been on the cards. Now, cultural similarity isn't enough to justify a reunification, so there are also some more substantive political arguments that it's worth running through. The main arguments in favour of unification are as following. Firstly, it comes down to security. Because the recent war in Ukraine has prompted many fears that Moldova could be Putin's next target. Moldova has a very small military, and defence spending never exceeds 0.4% of their GDP, making the nation extremely vulnerable to any potential Russian invasion. Becoming part of Romania, though, would no doubt make Moldova safer from any Russian threat. But first, they would also have to become an EU and NATO member. Something we'll come on to later. The second reason in favour, though, is that if done properly, a political union could increase trade between the two countries and boost growth. Many people in Moldova point to German unification as a possible model, aided by US or EU investment funds. Thirdly, due to their close historical, linguistic and cultural ties, many Moldovans already see themselves as Romanians and vice versa, and therefore believe that a political union would appropriately represent this fact. 
However, that's not to say that everyone's keen, and there are some major obstacles in place, including Transnistria. For those who don't know, Transnistria is a region on the east of Moldova that's been de facto independent from Moldova since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Now, Moldova still claims Transnistria as its own, but Transnistria essentially acts as an independent separate state with its own currency, passport and parliament. And importantly, separatist leaders in Tirazopol have made it clear that Transnistria has no significant interest in returning to Moldova's orbit, let alone joining up with Romania. And instead, they prefer to join up with Russia. So the only way for Moldovans in favour of unification to avoid retaliation from Moscow would be for Moldova to abandon Transnistria and resettle those who consider themselves to be Moldovans or Romanians back into the main new country, which would be politically difficult. Another difficult area would be Gagauzia, a geographically small area and home to about 160,000 people who represent about 4.6% of the Moldovan population. Now, the Gagauz people are ethnically and linguistically Turkic, but religiously they're Christian Orthodox. They're also generally pretty sympathetic to Russia and aren't particularly keen on reunification. In fact, in 2014, the people of Gagauzia voted in two referendums. In the first, they voted between their country's further integration into the EU or into the Moscow-led customs union, in which 98.5% voted in favour of closer ties with Moscow. And in the second referendum, they voted on the deferred status of the autonomous region of Gagauzia, where 98% of people voted in favour of independence if Romania and Moldova unified. Now, we should mention here that these referenda weren't considered constitutional by Moldovan authorities, who instead saw them as political attacks directed from Moscow. But Gagauzia could still be a real difficulty for Moldova if they do want to unify. The third problem is maybe less eye-catching, but there are some serious administrative concerns. With many in Moldova fearing that within this union, the administrative capital would remain in Romania, leaving Moldova with little influence over its own affairs. An obvious solution to this problem would be for Moldova to retain some sort of devolved powers, including its own parliament. But this precedent could open the door to demands for separate representation for Romania's Hungarian community, and it just goes to show that reunification could be a little more complicated than some imagine. Fourthly, unification with Moldova would mean Romania taking in up to a quarter of a million Russians if you include Transnistria. Now, there's a lot of politicians in Romania who feel nervous about letting so many Russians into the country, especially under the current circumstances, as they fear that it would open the door to Putin making the claim that Russia is the ultimate defender of all Russian speakers, which would lead to significant Russian interference into Romanian politics. The final big difficulty, though, is that Romania is a NATO and EU member, which makes life difficult for Moldova, as unification would mean that Moldova would have to join both organisations. And although Moldova has recently applied for EU membership itself, its current constitution outlaws joining any military alliance. So not only would Moldova have to negotiate an accession into the EU, it would also have to revise its constitutionally enshrined policy on neutrality. Given all of this, what's the likelihood of Romania and Moldova actually unifying? Well, the percentage of Moldovans in favour actually reached a record 43.9% in March 2021, according to Moldova's iData company. In 2018, a poll by the Romanian Bureau of Social Research showed that as many as 74% of Romanians would vote in favour of unification. However, that very same poll showed that only 27% of Romanians considered it to actually be necessary. All in all then, despite fairly significant public support, unification seems difficult and still fairly unlikely in the near future. Ultimately though, problem solving is always at the heart of politics. So if you want to be able to do what politicians often can't, then consider signing up to Brilliant. That's the STEM learning platform which actually features a class on the joy of problem solving. In that class, like all of their others, they use active learning techniques to help you learn complex subjects, like logical reasoning, deducing facts from fiction, and logic puzzles, with you learning through fun and engaging activities. 
These interactive classes cover all kinds of STEM topics too, from computer science and cryptocurrency to statistics and casino probability. So if you want to take your next step in STEM and support the channel at the same time, then you can sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash TLDREU. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support.